Hello, my name is Ed Frawley. This video is going to explain the features uh, and how to program most of the functions on the Educator Pro 900 remote collar. Before we begin, uh, I must say that this is not a collar that I or the people that work for me would recommend to a new dog trainer. It is the most feature rich remote collar on the market, but it's also the most complicated collar on the market to figure out how it works. And that's the reason I'm producing this videotape. This remote collar is designed for professional dog trainers. It is the most expensive remote collar on the market. It is not a remote collar that a new dog trainer should use not even if you want to become a professional dog trainer down the road. If you'd like to know what collar we recommend, I'm going to put an email address on the screen right now. Email us and we'll tell you what we think. So with that said, we'll move on. Before I get started though, if you're watching this on YouTube, you can't take advantage of some of the features that we have on the Learbird video player on our website. This is a free video, but this remote collar has more features on it than any other remote collar on the market. And as I go through the explanation of what the features are and how to program these features, there's going to come a time when you're going to say, what did you just say? Well, on the Learberg player, right down on the side by the play button, you're going to see the little rewind button. That's not a rewind button that takes you way, way back. Every time you click it, you get 10 seconds of, re of rewind. If you click it three times, you get 30 seconds of rewind. That's going to help you review. But the most important part is on the other side of the viewer, there is a chapter button. And I've broken these videos into uh, different chapters. But next to that, is the most important feature for students learning how to review a topic, and that's a note feature. I compare it to the post-it notes, and that is, as you're watching through the video and it's playing along the timeline, and let's say we get to uh, the boost feature, you can pause it, and when you pause it, you can click on the note feature, and you can put a title for the note that's associated with that spot on the timeline. Underneath the title for the note, you can write comments, your own personal comments. Now this note becomes a clickable link, and if you have 15 or 20 or 5 or 30 notes on any Learberg streaming video, when you come back tomorrow, next week, next year, you open up the video and there's all your personal notes, every one of them is a link. So you can click on it and it'll start from the point that you put that note. In essence, you're building your own training outline for whatever subject you're watching a streaming video on. It's going to make reviewing material so easy. If you've ever had a DVD and you've tried to go back and review a DVD and a specific thing that was mentioned in a DVD, you know how frustrating and how much time it takes to go forward, backward, forward, backward, forward, backward, a bunch of different times to find what you needed to look at. With the note feature, you come back, you look at all your notes, you say, oh yeah, I want to review that. Boom, you click on it and the video starts to play right there. So I encourage you to take advantage of the Learberg player. To use the note feature, you have to have a Learberg account, but basically that just means a name and an email address. We have to have a way where we can take your 10, 20, 30 notes and tie it to you. So to get a Learberg account, we need a name and an email address. We tie those two together. We don't spam your email account. Uh, we don't sell people's names and emails. Our goal in life is to produce good quality dog training material and sell top of the line dog training equipment. video concerns how to work all the features in the Pro Educator remote collars. It's, uh, it should be said that a lot of people, when they decide to use a remote collar on their dog, 
they want to get the best caller they can get. So they'll, they'll go and they'll buy the Pro Educator because it is the best caller on the market. It's the most expensive caller on the market. It's not as much as, you know, I think the first remote caller I bought back in 1978 uh, was a Pro 100 from Tritronics and I paid a thousand bucks for it. I think you can get good callers today, really good callers today for under $500. But for the purpose of this course, I'm gonna talk about the Pro Educator. I'm gonna start by assuming you've got it in hand and the first thing you're gonna do is you're gonna open up your box and take a look at all the things that come with it. So I'm gonna tell you what's in it. Uh, if you open up your box and some of these things aren't there, First thing you gotta do is call Learbird. We have excellent customer service. We wanna make sure you're happy. So you've got your manual. Um, the owner of the Educator Collar Company, Greg, is a great guy, I love him. He is a, in, he's a genius uh, engineer. He's the guy that designs and puts these collars together. The mistake that Greg makes is he writes his own user manuals and they suck. Greg, they suck. I can't figure it out. I have to call your office a million times to try and figure out how to work this thing. Have somebody else do your manuals for you. So anyway, take this thing and throw it in the garbage. You're gonna have a receiver in your collar. Here's your receiver that goes on the dog's neck. You're gonna have a transmitter in the collar, in the box, I'm sorry. Uh, you're gonna have a charger. I have them all unwound. They don't, come, they don't come all tangled up like this. But you're gonna have a charger with two cables. One of the cables plugs into the transmitter in the back, or pardon me, the receiver in the back. And the other one is a mini USB connector. And that one charges the transmitter. So you've got a a plug with two cables. You're gonna to wanna to keep that. A slick feature that comes with the Pro Educator is a USB stick. This has a computer program that will allow you, and we'll cover it later in this video, that will allow you to program some of the features on your transmitter. I'm not gonna go into that right now, but you're gonna to wanna to for sure have this. Uh, you're gonna have a little strap that can connect to the back of your transmitter. There are longer contact points. The contact points make contact with your dog's neck. They come with the shorter contact points. You're given longer contact points in a little Ziploc bag. If you have a long haired dog, you'll probably want to put the longer contact points on. It comes with a little black wrench to take your contact points they just screw off I won't take this off but it was that easy to turn it make sure they're on tight when you put it back on but you're gonna want your wrench it comes with a little belt clip that screws on the back of your transmitter my advice to this put it with the manual because it's an excellent way to lose your transmitter and no one will be madder than you at yourself if you start using that belt clip and you get home and this baby's missing because you're gonna have to buy another one don't even use it use this little strap or just keep it in your hand or your pocket it is also the last thing in the box is going to be this little light it comes in a ziploc bag and what that does is allows you to test your stimulation. If you're one of those chickens that's afraid to put the collar on yourself to see if it's working, you can use this little light. When it's on and you push the button, this will light up. When I get into the next segment on this video on how to turn the system on, I'm gonna show you another way to see that you might not ever have to use this. It's your call. So that's what comes when you open up the box. Just make sure you have all these things there, then you're ready to go on and start to learn how to use it. Now we're gonna talk about how to turn your collar on once you get it. And I do say and should say that 
When you get this out of the box, the first thing you should do is plug them both in, plug them into the wall, let them stay plugged in for at least 12 hours. I know it's, you want to get going, you want to learn how to do it, yada, 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 but take the time to do it right. So plug it in, charge it fully. Uh, let's assume now they've been plugged in for 12 hours, you come out and you're going to turn your collar on. Your transmitter needs to be turned on. There's an on and off button. When you're looking at it, on the right hand side, right here, there's two buttons. One has a P, that's your program button. The other has an on and off button. So to turn the transmitter on, you simply push the button, the blue light comes on, so you know your transmitter is working. The blue light is on for a number of seconds and then it'll turn itself off. Anytime you, once it turns itself off like you just saw there, if you want to see what was on it, just push any button and the blue light comes back on. Now, we want to turn on our receiver. The receiver has been plugged in and it has, the receiver has a little red magnetic dot on the back right here and the transmitter has a red dot on the back. They're raised dots. This one is sunken in a little bit, this one's raised. To turn it on, you just take this red dot and touch it to that red dot like this and it goes on. Oh, <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> that can't happen. Anyway, that doesn't ever happen. But the receiver is on and you can see that it's on because it's blinking green. Now, at the end of the day, when you're done training, you take your transmitter, put it on the receiver, and if you see it, it's going to turn red. See, it turned red there. That way, you know it's off. If you're not sure it's off, just strap this baby to your neck. Turn it up to 100 and push the button. Thought I was going to do it too, didn't you? <laughs> I'm not that dumb. Okay, that's how you turn it on. That's how you turn it off. So, let's just take a second and talk about keeping your units charged. Back when I was on the Sheriff's Department from a million years ago, 1990 to 2000, as a canine handler, every single time I took my patrol dog out, I put the remote collar on him. Every time. And maybe one in 20 or 30 times did I ever had, have to actually use the transmitter, but it was on him all the time. When I came home, I take the collar off the dog and I plug it into the charger for two reasons. You can plug this thing in all the time. They have built-in switches. When it gets fully charged, it turns itself off. That's the important thing. You always want to know, if you're going to use a remote collar, you always want to know that it's charged. Uh, a little story for me, just a couple weeks ago, my cousin Keith out in South Dakota, I was out fishing with him, and he has a new golden retriever. He's a hunter, so he's teaching his young dog, who's, this will be the dog's first hunting season, he's teaching the, the dog with the collar, and he wanted me to go out and give him some advice on how to use the collar. Well, his collar wasn't charged. We were out in the field for about five seconds, and a deer jumped up, and as his dog disappeared over the horizon, he's sitting there calling him, trying to charge it, or trying to stimulate him. His collar wasn't charged. So if you just remember, when you're not using this baby, have one place in your house where it's always charging. In our home, Cindy uses the remote collar on her dogs. They're right at her feeding station downstairs in the basement. That's what you do. You plug it in when you're not using it, put it in the same place. You'll not lose it because you know when you need it, it's over there by the feeding station and it's plugged in. So in the next 30 seconds, I just want to talk about the number of seconds because there's different times that the collar will stimulate your dog depending upon how you have the program set. It comes from the box with the S3 set for momentary. Momentary means it's just an instantaneous 
plap, it's just like giving your dog a pop on the leash. That's what momentary is. Continuous is that it will continu continually stimulate your dog if you hold the button down for 10 seconds. At the end of 10 seconds, it turns itself off, okay? Momentary is a pop, holding the continuous down will stimulate for 10 seconds. The instantaneous, should you choose to use the instantaneous method, will you turn it on, you start from zero. To use instantaneous, you have to start from zero. You turn it on and it's gonna stay on for 45 seconds or until you turn it off. That's very important to understand on the instantaneous. 45 seconds is how long it can be on there. And we'll talk more just in the chapter on instantaneous. The other two times are if you use the ramp button, if you program one of them, one of these four buttons to be the ramp button, it will go from zero to whatever your working level is in one second. And then it'll stay on for 10 seconds. So before we start to get into uh, the explanation of the features and how to program this remote collar, I want to add a disclaimer here. There are so many, a ton of different ways that you can program this remote collar. Just because I'm explaining how to use the collar doesn't mean that I'm promoting somebody to use a boost feature or that I'm promoting somebody to use a 45 second uh, instantaneous feature. I'm gonna explain what the features are in here. It's gonna be up to you uh, and your trainer or you figuring out what you wanna do with your specific dog. Just because I cover the feature doesn't mean that I will ever use that feature on my dog. I think it's important that you understand that. The transmitter has four stimulation buttons. They call them S buttons. There's S1 here, S2 here, S3 here. The red button on the front is S4. The other two buttons on the system are the program button on the top, on the top right, the on and off button. Really all the buttons you're gonna have to worry about. And then you have a dial that you can turn your collar from zero all the way up to 100. And when it's at 100, it says high. So that's what's on the transmitter, it's very simple. S1, S2, S3, S4. Those four buttons can be programmed in a million different ways that we're gonna talk about in a few minutes. Your program button has a P on it, remember that. The on and off button is just below it, how you turn your transmitter on and off. The on and off button is gonna be used later on in the programming, we're gonna cover it in detail. So that's what we got. Now I'm gonna talk about, when you first turn it on, you're gonna see a number of things happen in this little blue circle and the circle is blue when you push one of the buttons. I'm gonna just identify what's on there, and then as we go through the video, you're gonna learn exactly what each one of these little, or each one of these little uh, letters means inside this blue circle. So now in this segment, we're gonna talk about what you see on the display, or what you could see on the display, depending upon where you are in your programming modes. It starts with, on the top left-hand side, momentary stimulation. Next to that is a plus, which means momentary boost stimulation. Next to that is continuous stimulation, then continue, the plus means continu continuous boost stimulation. And then you'll notice that the blue light only stays on for a few seconds. That's to conserve your battery power. Push any of the buttons and it gets light again. The next is the R for ramp. Uh, then there's an R plus for ramp boost. Then we have an instantaneous stimulation. We have a V for vibration, a T for tone. The, uh, we have a one flashing right out of the box. You're gonna see a one flashing. That means it's programmed for one dog. 
This unit can be programmed for three dogs, so you could have three if you choose to buy additional receivers. You can program it so you'll have two dogs or three dogs. Right out of the box, there's a one that's flashing there. That means it's programmed to one dog. If we had two dogs, you'd have a one and a two. If we had three, we would have a one, two, and three, right above the levels of stimulation. Underneath the levels of stimulation, you have a bar with four pieces. That's the charge level that's on your transmitter, okay? There are other symbols that you can see on this dial if you're, vi if you're, you're programming, but they're not on there all the time. Right out of the box, those are the things you're gonna see. But you can also have, you can have a, a night tracking light on your receiver for your dog, and that'll be displayed on the dial. You can have uh, a symbol for when you are pairing your transmitter to your receiver. So if you get, let's say you buy this system and it's a one dog system and you get another dog and you decide I wanna buy another transmitter, you're gonna have to pair the second transmitter uh, or the second receiver to your transmitter and there's a pairing symbol on there so you know when your unit is pairing. And then there's a, uh, a lost transmitter symbol that's on this. Now I'm going to talk about how to program the four different buttons on your transmitter. There's two ways to do that. You can program it right from here using your transmitter or you can connect this to your computer using the USB model, and we'll talk about that in a minute, and program them that way. Now I wanna put uh, a caveat in here about when you first start to learn the programming. It confused me when I start. If you look at your manual, your manual is gonna say, push your program button until you see PR. Well, I looked at that baby and I said, that's not a PR, that's a PA. That's a misprint in the manual. <laughs> Guess what? It, it really wasn't. It was a misread on my eyes. So throughout this uh, little training video, you're gonna hear me say PA, PR, PA, PR. Same thing, just a matter of how my pea brain works when I'm looking at it. But that's one of the caveats. The other is there will be times when you're going through programming certain functions you're going to push, push the uh, S1 button, and it's going to look like 51. You'll push the S2 button, and in the programming phase, uh, it could look like 52. Or the S3 can look like 53, when in fact they're S1, S2, and S3. I just say that so you're probably a lot smarter than me, and you'll figure it out quicker than I did, but it's there. I put it out there, so when you see me say 51, I mean, <laughs> I mean S1. And when I say PA, I mean PR or PA, I'm not sure. Anyway, those are my caveats as you go through the pro programming stages with this baby. So now we're gonna talk about how to program the the four buttons on the collar to whether you want them to be uh, momentary, continuous, uh, momentary ra uh, boost, continuous boost, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. It's a simple thing to do once you understand it. To start it, push your program button until you see a PA on the dial. That puts it in the programming mode. We're gonna program the S1 button to be continuous. So we're gonna get it in the programming mode by pushing the programming button until we see PA. All my buttons are flashing now. Now I'm gonna push S1, and I push it until it rotates through all the various options to continuous. So I see the C there. Then I push the program button again, and that's all it is to it. One more time, so now when I push S1, I can see I'm at, the C shows, that means it's continuous. Very simple, one more time. I'll program S2 to be continuous boost. Remember, continuous boost is C plus. 
get it in the program mode. All the lights are flashing. I'm going to go over here and I'm going to push the S2 button until I see plus, until I see C plus. There's C, C plus, there it is. I push the program button again and that's how quickly I programmed it. So in this chapter we're going to talk about the boost feature. It is a simple feature once you understand it, but it can be confusing for first time dog owners. So I'm going to break it into four different segments. The first part is going to be, I'm going to explain what the boost is, exactly what the boost is. Then I'm going to talk about what stimulation features can have a boost associated with it. Then I'm going to talk about how to change the factory preset to whatever level you want. And finally, I'm going to talk about how to program one of the four buttons to be the boost. So we're going to start with what is a boost. The factory preset on a boost is five levels of stimulation. That means that whatever I'm working at at the moment, if I push the boost button, the five levels of stimulation is going to be instantly added to it. So if I'm working on a level 20 with this dog and I push a boost button, the dog's going to get 25 levels of stimulation. If I've changed the programming for the boost to be 20, and the working level on this dog is 20, and I push the boost button, the dog's going to get 40 levels of stimulation. So basically, preset is five levels of stimulation. The dog trainer can change the boost to whatever they want. If they want to add it and change, it, uh, change the boost to 10, 15, 20, 3, it makes no difference, but you can change the boost to what you want. Now, let's talk about the features that can have a boost because not all stimulation features can have a boost. There's four stimulation uh, features on the collar. Momentary can have a boost, continuous can have a boost, ramp can have a boost, instant cannot have a boost. So you've got momentary, continuous, and ramp. Now I'm gonna talk about how to change the boost level, and when you change it, it's the same for all three levels of stimulation. Once you put a boost in here, it's the same for momentary, continuous, and ramp. You can't have momentary have five, continuous have 10, ramp have 15. Let's talk about how we're gonna change that now. The first thing I'm gonna do is turn the collar on. So I push the on and off button, it's on. Then I put it in the programming phase. I hold the P down, until the outer ring is flashing at me. That tells me I'm in the programming phase. Now I want to put it into the boost programming phase. To do that, I just press the on off button one time. As soon as I do that, the blinking around the outside of the dial stops and what I'm faced with is a plus feature. And the plus is boost. So what I see on the dial when I'm in the programming phase for boost is a plus, a blinking one, which tells me I'm in the one collar, and it has to be blinking. So now I'm going to change it to 10 levels of stimulation. I adjust my dial to show 10. I push the S1 button, and then I take and push the P button or the programming button to get out of it. So what I would recommend is play with your uh, transmitter, program the S1, the S2 to be momentary until you have your, your mind wrapped around how to change the programming, how to change the, the boost feature. Remember, you got to put it in the programming phase, hit the on and off button one time until you see the plus and all the other blinking lights are gone, adjust your dial, push S1 to lock it in, and leave the programming phase by pushing P. That's as quick as it is. So this brings us to the end of the first part of the Pro Educator streaming video. If you're new to remote collar dog training, I recommend that you learn how to train with a remote collar correctly. Learberg has done a number of DVDs and streams and courses on remote collar training. I tell people, that the remote collar is the greatest tool that's ever been invented for dog training when it's used with low level stimulation. It's also the most abused tool that's ever been invented for dog training. That's why 
<laughs> you see all these animal rights people out there bad-mouthing the use of a remote collar when, if they had learned how to train with it correctly and had done low-level stimulation, they would very quickly learn that the vast majority of the times that a good dog trainer uses a remote collar is at low levels, levels that a human can't even feel. The use of a remote collar, when it's done correctly, is like tapping your dog on the shoulder and saying, hey, come on, pay attention to me. Just do what I want you to do. It doesn't have to be shock the dog. It's not hurt the dog. It's, hey, come on, pay attention to me. If you bought any brand of remote collar from Learberg, you got the free stream on uh, remote collar training for the pet owner. Uh, if you wanted it in a DVD, you got a 50% discount. In the second stream, I'm gonna talk about how to fit the collar on your dog's neck. I'm gonna talk about how to determine the levels, the working levels of stimulation for you on your dog. Every dog is different, so we're gonna talk about that in the second stream. I'm gonna talk about the ramp feature, how it works, why I'm not a big fan of it. I'm gonna talk about the instant, instantaneous feature, the eye feature on the remote collar, and again, that's a feature that's designed more for professional dog trainers, but I'm gonna go over it in detail. I'm gonna talk about the light, why you have to be a little bit careful because it sucks a lot of battery power. Uh, I'm gonna explain how to lock the stimulation features down. There's a lock feature on this. Uh, I'm gonna explain how to program in the lost transmitter feature. Most of the people that use the belt clips might wanna have that. <laughs> I didn't mean it that way, sorry, Greg. Uh, I'm gonna talk about how to program your transmitter by using the USB that comes with it and programming your transmitter with your computer. Now your, your transmitter has a factory default of vibrate and tone. Those two features have different levels, but the only way you can change the level of vibration or the only way you can change the level of the tone is by hooking it up to your computer and a changing or reprogramming the transmitter with the use of your computer. So we're gonna go through all of that in the second, in the second stream.